gonna watch this video. It's called Have Arena Shooters Had Their Day. This is on August 23rd, 2017. Once upon a time, a in my bad, it's by Jack Frags. Again, go check him out. He's a good YouTuber. I watch him a lot. Arena shooters were the staple of PC gaming. Mm -hmm. Head back to 1999 and Quake 3 Arena yep. and Unreal Tournament were going head to head uh -huh. in a straight up arena shooter fight. And again, what ended up happening here is it wasn't that arena shooters, like... Like, they just became less popular because games like Counter-Strike came out. Games that other people haven't really seen in terms of, like, what you could do with PC games came out. And that's why Quake fell off. To the and death. Unreal Tournament fell Back off. Back then, games like Battlegrounds, Dota, League of Legends, the sort of games that dominate the PC gaming scene right now, didn't yeah. really exist in the mainstream. Battlefield 1942 didn't release until a few years later, in 2002, but the behemoth that is now Counter-Strike would officially release in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. The first Dota game released in 2003, yep. but it wasn't anywhere near as mainstream as the game is today. Yep. When I was in school, the main games that I would play were Counter-Strike and Quake. On mm -hmm. LAN Unreal Tournament, Instagib was the order of the day. If you played <laughs> PC games back then, you almost certainly played or heard of Quake and Unreal Tournament. Mm -hmm. Half-Life Deathmatch also became a really big thing back in the day. A lot of players started playing PC games simply because of those titles. Yep, Fast because forward of Half-Life, Quake, and Unreal. It's true. And Counter-Strike. It's true. Day, it really is. And we live in an era where there are thousands upon thousands of games on PC. We yeah. don't live in a time where games are basic anymore. We've got MOBAs, racing simulations, survival mm -hmm. games, battle royale games. We even have games when you can simulate being a car mechanic or a farm worker. <laughs> the point is that there... Hey man, I've always... Have you never played Farming Sim 2019? You've never bought all like $1,000 worth of DLC from them? You're not even living then. There are so many games to choose from, mm -hmm. a choice that just wasn't there back in 2000. Yeah. And you were really limited by what you could play. So what you played was what was available. And generally and speaking, good. if you were into games with guns, that was lots of different arena shooters. Very yeah. few game franchises can last over a 10 year period. Counter-Strike is one of those examples. Yep. It's gone through a few versions, but it still grips people even today. And, and Counter-Strike, the reason Counter-Strike grips people and people are interested in Counter-Strike is because it gives a sense of identity, right? You're playing, you, you feel inherently like, maybe you don't feel like it, right? But you can relate with terrorism and counter-terrorism, right? Because that is a very real thing that happens within modern modern times, right? And I think that's why Counter-Strike is as big as it is, is because there's a sense of relation and identity to it. Arena shooters, however, have fallen off. That yeah. being said, Epic Well, I mean, hey, I would love to shoot a rocket at my foot and my feet and not blow my legs off, but come on. Like, it's not relatable enough. ...are working on an Unreal Tournament game, and a new Quake game being developed by Bethesda Studios is yeah. also in the pipeline. And then, of course, you've got new games like Lawbreakers, which you're seeing here, and that's just released. But it's not oh done so God. well in terms of numbers. Yeah. Right well, now for Law... Again, Lawbreakers, the issue with Lawbreakers was entirely separate from the issues that other arena shooters have. I don't know if I'd consider Lawbreakers an arena shooter... Or a arena shooter, the arena shooter. It's definitely it's 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 a very gray area in terms of definition. I do think like maybe a good thirty percent or fifty percent of it is. But the fact that there aren't weapon pickups and it's not too heavily focused on map control is ultimately why I couldn't really consider it an arena shooter. Breakers, there's only 555 people playing the game on PC yeah. with a 24 hour peak of 1550. Its all time peak at the moment was only 7000, which for a brand new game on Steam, honestly. And honestly, I think the skill ceiling of, of Lawbreakers was kind of really high. Like, I think in terms of, of mechanics, I think it was a lot higher than Quake was. Just because maybe maybe it wasn't the skill ceiling, maybe it's how bad the movement felt. The movement in Lawbreakers just didn't feel good. It didn't feel fluid. It felt very very floaty, and floaty movement oftentimes is a sign of like very um I don't know very bad gameplay maybe. Mm. And also Lawbreakers had a very it was an identity crisis right. 
It was like, oh, I'm having a midlife crisis. I don't know if I want to be a hero shooter, an arena shooter, or an arcade shooter. And because it had it had elements of all three things, and I think that's ultimately why it failed. It's pretty bad. To put that into perspective, it isn't even on the top 100 played games on Steam. Now, yeah. unfortunately, we don't have PlayStation 4 numbers yet because the game came out on PS4 as well. But I think it's safe to say that the buzz for the game has already died down. Yep. Now, let me just say that numbers don't mean everything. Cliff Plus And I think I think if you're going to be making a, a arena shooter in 2020, 2019, 20, anything from like to the, the mid two, uh, 2010s and up, you have to make it free to play. Like, free-to-play gaming didn't really get big until, like, 2014, 2015. But free-to-play gaming is, I think, where gaming is going in the future. And I really wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing free-to-play AAA games that have, like, primary, uh, primary monetization schemes for, like, cosmetics or things like that. I, I could see that happening. And maybe, again... That might not be the case, but that's, I feel like that's where gaming is headed. Zinsky, who's the founder of Bosky, they're the people that make Lawbreakers, yeah. said himself that he wasn't bothered and insisted that it's a marathon, not a sprint. And of course, the game released on PS4, like I said, and we don't know the player base numbers there. But no matter the way you shape it, it's definitely not a great start for the game based on the PC numbers yeah. and also based on viewers on Twitch and YouTube, but which is important nowadays. And I think it's a big shame because honestly, it's a really good game. I think it's well made. It yeah. looks great. It's a lot of fun to play. It runs fantastic on PC. All the options are there. Yeah, There's and no again, I don't think it suffered terribly from optimization issues. It's just, I think it had a huge identity crisis. And maybe that's wrong of me to say, but it's like, it's it's very much where it's like, oh, I'm Destiny 2 mixed with Quake, mixed with, uh, I don't know, mixed with Overwatch, right? I, I, think, I think that's really what it comes down to, is it's Quake mixed with Destiny mixed with Overwatch. And I don't think that makes for appealing gameplay. Many AAA games are already monetized like free-to-play games anyways, yeah. And I could totally see AAA games going, like, totally free-to-play. I really could. Like, games like Quake and Destiny, I wouldn't consider them AAA games, but they're developed like AAA games. And they, that's, like, that's a sign, I think, that's where the market is headed. No doubt that this is a great arena shooter. I mean, even Apex Legends is developed like a AAA game, and it has its free-to-play. Look at the reviews, it's had really good reviews all across the board. Mm -hmm. But I honestly think that players nowadays are so spoiled for choice when it comes to games that arena shooters just don't have an audience anymore. Also, thank you so much for uh, tuning in, Hugo. I appreciate it. As always, there, buddy. And they can become very tiresome for a lot of people. Yeah. I, for one, can't really take those sort of games for much more than a few hours anymore. But Exactly, see? They can't take it. I don't think because it's it's bad. It's just very monotonous gameplay. And it's the same thing over and over again. And you can go, well, bio, so is Counter-Strike. Yeah, but Counter-Strike has a lot of different variation between like the different rounds and weapons and all of that. Where Quake is like, oh, you spawn in, you grab a weapon, you kill, you die, you respawn. And again, I think that's part of the reason why Battle Royales are as popular as they are, is because they take that model, but they blow it up on a very wide scale level, and people enjoy grand things, right? So it gives a sense of, um, of like, oh, wow, I'm exploring an open world PvP shooter, sort of. Maybe, maybe that's the wrong take, but it, it's like, I don't know, like, Deathmatch is essentially, like, Team Deathmatch is essentially Battle Royale. Battle Royale is multi-team deathmatch. So I don't, again, I don't know how Quake can transition itself to be more fun. Like, it can always be more casually friendly, and they can do that, but casual friendliness doesn't mean fun. Ten years ago, I could play Quake 3 Arena or Unreal Tournament all day. But as I said, yeah. that's what was available back then, and that's what everyone was playing, so yeah. I just did it. Times, I suppose, just change. Of course, there are still players who will play Lawbreakers and Quake Champions as their main games, and that's mm -hmm. absolutely fine. They're great games. But if you look at the play numbers, it's apparent that those people are in a very small minority. You could say that some of the reason for Lawbreakers' poor reception on PC is perhaps a poor marketing campaign. Maybe they did. That's fair. 
I think a lot of games nowadays fail because of poor marketing to begin with. Counter-Strike, Battle Royale, Siege, and stuff also have a considerable amount of downtime in matches. They don't require full concentration for 10 minutes straight. Exactly. And I think that's another really valid point, right? Like, whenever I'm playing Quake, I try to try to shift my focus from playing the game super competitively, right? So I can focus on chat. That's the exact reason why I don't duel on streams. And I think, I think it's more enjoyable when I can talk with you guys and, you know, play the game at the same time while not necessarily focusing too much on my gameplay. However, I think with the addition with modes like Clan Arena into Quake Champions, that could really propel yeah it could propel like the twitch scene because in clan arena it's like you have you could you could play it super competitively right you have two options super competitively which is the first option or you can just play it you know play around uh you know shoot people maybe not do too much in terms of team play and then you die and you interact with chat and i try to mix it up especially when i'm not playing clan arena do a good enough job getting the message out to the masses exactly what their game was. Mm -hmm. Cliff, even by his own admission, said that he wished he wouldn't have allowed streaming of the alpha because he felt that it showed the game off in a much too early state, and honestly, I tend to agree. The yeah, progress made between fair. the alpha that's and fair. the main release is very significant. Lots of Twitch streamers and YouTubers, including myself, showed off the game during alpha, and you have to assume that some people will have seen that footage and made a judgment, even if it's not the final version of the game. Mm -hmm. In the gaming industry, I, I think I think Quake suffered from that as well. The one million dollar tournament. It always goes back to it. In my examples, I think that tournament was a year too early. Two years too early. If they did that in 2019, I think it would have generated a lot more interest. I really do. I really believe that first impressions are everything now. But when I think about it, I can't recall an arena shooter in the past five years that's done very well. If you consider Overwatch, for example, to be an arena shooter, that would be the one exception. Mm -hmm. But I'm I don't think a lot of people would consider Overwatch an arena shooter. Uh, again, if you consider Overwatch an arena shooter, you kind of have to consider TF2 an arena shooter. And I don't think either of them are really arena shooters. I think they don't meet the definition in terms of weapon pickups, map control, a heavy emphasis on, like, uh, um, multiple weapon mastery, right? Like in TF2, you have classes and loadouts. In Overwatch, you have, oh, you have loadouts. If anything, Overwatch is a hero shooter, which means it's a uh, it's a mix between like an arcade shooter and a MOBA. I don't think I, I think Quake in terms of arena shooters, Quake Champions in terms of arena shooters, is like a hero shooter arena shooter question mark question mark question mark. Um, like I wouldn't consider Overwatch and and Quake Champions in the same vein simply because Overwatch feels more like an arcade shooter, like Call of Duty, for example. Not sure that I really class it as an arena shooter myself. Overwatch is much more of a team based multiplayer shooter. The most yeah. comparable thing to it, I think, is Team Fortress 2. When I watch people playing it and I play it myself, it doesn't feel or look like a classic arena shooter. And yeah. Blizzard just oozed quality. And when they first showed off the game and went, here you go, everyone just try out the beta, it was honestly already like a fully polished game. Yep. And of course, Blizzard and Activision together, they've got the might of their companies to push forward the marketing campaign. And they did an insane mm -hmm. job of getting the game out there, mixing it with their cinematic YouTube videos detailing the lore. The characters yep. and the story are very strong in Overwatch. And I know some people that don't even Hello? play Overwatch. My computer froze and i also think on top of that like not not saying that this lore part is very um inaccurate but i do think a lot of people don't care about the lore right like i i have friends that play other games that are very lore heavy like destiny and they don't care about the lore the lore is very interesting i think but it's not the reason why i play the game right ow is highly objective based attack defend asymmetry yeah but what would you consider Counter-Strike then? Because Counter-Strike is very heavy on objective play, but I wouldn't consider it to be the main reason why people play Counter-Strike. I don't think people play Counter-Strike because it's a team-based shooter. I think they play it because it's something they can really relate to and they like the gunplay of the game. Because the gunplay in Counter-Strike feels pretty good, all things considered, right?
people watch that just kind of like the characters and enjoy learning about their stories and watching the cinematics. Yeah. That's how strong that IP is at the moment. And what about a game like Battleborn? I mean, if you remember the launch of that, while uh, not an arena shooter again, in fact, it was more of a MOBA type game. I think poor, that 2K did a poor job of marketing the game there. It released yeah. almost under the radar and the player base plummeted faster than it was gained. And yeah. the reason that I mentioned Battleborn is because its creator Gearbox Software is developing a new game. A one versus one first person competitive shoot. I was actually just about to say this. Uh, I got into the alpha and I can still play this game, right? This game he's talking about. The only issue is like, what's uh, is Project 1v1. I don't even know what's happening with the game. I think, I think it died. Yeah, this game is pretty fucking dead. Like, I can still play it. It's still in my Steam library. Project. Yeah, see, there it is. Closed technical test. Uh, and I have, like, different versions that I can do, I think, right? Betas. Okay, no, I don't. But anyways, that's that's against the... the that's besides the point. Um, Project 1v1 was very interesting in terms of it being 2K's first competitive entry into into a competitive market into an esports market and i think it did really good for what i was able to play the only issue i think of it is i don't think people are going to want a 1v1 for the the meat of the game right like they want more than just 1v1s that combines card based elements so let's just go into that into more detail for a second a competitive first person shooter that combines the action of a fast paced one versus one first person combat mm -hmm. with the metagame strategy of a collectible car and i mean that's where paladin's downfall was right everyone hated the card system in paladins and right but rightfully so and eventually paladins was like yeah this card system's a bad idea and i think that's the issue project 1v1 is running into Hard game. Now, maybe I could be really wrong here, and this could be the next big thing. I doubt it. Hearthstone for the <laughs> FPS game. I, I maybe. doubt it. But my gut tells me that it just <laughs> isn't going to take off, and I think yeah. you can already see that from the concept. The era of 1v1 arena FPS games it's just over. isn't there anymore. They're just. If you're going to make an arena shooter, you do not want to focus on the 1v1 aspect. That's that's just the truth, right? In an arena shooter. It, like. As much as I, I go against it, I don't think people play team-based games because they're team-based games. It's just that the majority of them are team-based games. So, I mean, that just comes with it. However, however, I do think the mental strain of duel and, like, managing it yourself is, is just the... Uh, it's a downfall. It's a trap. It really is. And I think if you focus more on the team-based side of things of arena shooters, people would enjoy it way more. Make it, make it, again, people, people are going to hate me for this, but make it feel like an arcade shooter, right? Make the maps, the weapon layouts, etc. Make it accessible. One power weapon per map, maybe two at most. Don't put rocket, rail, and LG on the map. Put rockets on the map with a bunch of cess weapons, like, uh, like MG or, or, or a shotgun or something like that. Nail gun. You don't want power, like, the reason you want to do that is because it makes prioritizing learning the weapons so much less. And because the combat in that game is so unintuitive, right? And I think I think that's a big reason why Quake Champions and Diabotical have huge hurdles. Because they need, they need to make it to where the combat feels intuitive. But Because right now, it's just not. Arena shooter combat isn't intuitive at all isn't the interest i'll happily be proven wrong though and in fairness we need to see exactly how this game will operate before giving it a full judgment i can't yeah. really say that it won't work without seeing it but my initial reaction was who actually wants to play a game like that i know i personally don't and i'm sure that there are some people out there who think hey that's a cool idea but once again i think they're a very very small minority and the concept of the game, I just can't see it taking off before it's even launched. And I'm yeah. not trying to squash creativity here. I think it's cool that designers are trying out new ideas and mashing different genres together. 
but you've always got to think about it from a business perspective that is this game actually going to sell is there an audience for it i think to understand yeah, why arena shooters just don't have the popularity that they once did you have to see the way that not only games have developed but also the social side of gaming 10 yeah. to 15 years ago arena shooters were all based around showing off an individual's amazing skill whereas today's most popular games are far much more team-based games like battlefield came along and started to show off large-scale battles yeah. between 64 players with squads of five working together for a larger goal yep. counter-strike of course which we've mentioned and then newer games like rainbow six siege provided small maps where team play was a requirement to mm -hmm. win sure games like quake and unreal tournament had team-based game modes but it was the jewels that were always the most popular yep. these days platforms like steam TeamSpeak, twitter discord they all provide a way to meet new people and make playing with others easier. Yep. For me and many others, it's far more enjoyable to play a game with two, three, or maybe four other people in, let's say, a game of Battlegrounds or Battlefield yep. and have moments of fast-paced gameplay, but also moments where you can chill and relax and, and talk. I find the most enjoyment in games when I can focus up when it's yep. needed, but also just relax and chat with friends at the same time. And again, that's the way I kind of treat streaming Quake Champions right now is it's like... I just want to talk with people and, and meet people and get their opinions on things, right? I think everyone's opinion kind of matters in terms of what they can do to make arena shooters more popular. And I think it's it's something that it's very important. It's a very important conversation to have, not only within the community, but within developers and within other other circles of games too. And, you know, I think I think that's what Quake Champions needs to do, right? is they need to make the downtime way more uh way more exaggerated, right? Like if you're playing deathmatch, you're obviously one you're going to want to get back into the fight. If you're playing clan arena, you're going to be you're going to know that you're going to be out for a round if you do that. And they need to make more modes that focus on this. And again, it's like the it's like the it's like anti quake though, if you do that, right? But I think I think there is a possibility for them to do that. I think I think if you were to do, I think if Quake were to be way more team focused, it would have more of a shot at gaining some popularity. I really think it would. It's just it's always again you can always make it more casual friendly, but that doesn't make it fun. And that's that's something that I I really want to think on and figure out. Well, what can Quake do, right? What can Quake do to be more fun? And it's like people play Quake because it's like fast-paced action. So how can you incorporate that and make it have downtime? And again, Clan Arena is a perfect example of this, but you don't want the downtime. Battlegrounds and Battlefield, for yeah. instance, provide that. Even in a game like Rainbow Six Siege, when you're in the planning phase, whether you're yeah. using a drone to scout around, you could be chatting with your mates about the latest episode of Game of Thrones or whatever it was <laughs> that you did at work today. I don't know, but there's always some space to kind of chill, relax and be sociable. Now, on the flip side to that, games like Quake, Unreal and Lawbreakers are just so fast paced and intense that they need much more of your attention. You have to yeah. be moving constantly, outthinking your opponent, focused constantly, it's true. aiming it's consistently true. all of the time. And I guess that that level of focus just isn't what I personally enjoy anymore. And I imagine that's, that's the that's same fair. for a lot of other people. And again, that's not that's fine. People are allowed to have that opinion. And I think I think you can put Quake man this i really wish i was on the diabolical dev team i have zero game development skills but i'm an ideas man i think most people are ideas people though like everyone has an idea about things but anyways i think that's a fair opinion to have right like gaming has shifted right like you you wouldn't ever see 1.6 be popular you would see csgo being popular and i think that's very very fair it's like it's the whole thing with battalion 1944 i People still hate me for this, but I brought this up in, in uh, Quake, uh, the, the NAQC Discord, which is NA Arena Shooter right now. And back when Battalion 1944 was going to launch, I was like, there's no way that game is popular. It's going to start out with a high player base, but it's going to die really quickly. And everyone was like, oh, no, you're wrong, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, it, it was one of the most popular games ever back in whenever uh, COD 4 was out, right? And it's like... Yeah, but gaming isn't COD 4 anymore. 
Modern Warfare 2, I don't think would be nearly as popular as it would be today compared to back then. And I think if Battalion 1944 released back then, it would be popular. But as today's standards, people don't want that fast-paced gameplay anymore. That's why Call of Duty is a lot... Like, Call of Duty just feels slower. And you can tell. Like, if you compared gameplay, you can tell it's slower. Games have moved on. I think we're in a time where gaming has become much more of a sociable event. And winning yeah. as a team and creating those awesome because and funny slow moments gameplay lets is you much be more social. enjoyable with friends than playing the game on your own those moments mm -hmm. when you're playing in a competitive game with a buddy with a squad of four a squad of five and you come across an obstacle or situation you think about it you communicate you use tactics and together you overcome whatever that obstacle is and then go on to the next obstacle or yeah. to win the game it just seems so much more satisfying that way Arena shooters just don't give you that, and I think that's what the majority of the gamers are looking for nowadays. Going yeah. back to Lawbreakers, though, I think there's still a chance for it. Originally, it was meant to be a free-to-play game, but that model changed, and instead it moved to a paid game. To Lawbreakers' credit, it's only 30 bucks. They didn't charge the full normal 60 bucks asking price. And, and to be fair, again, Lawbreakers was a game that was developed like a AAA game, and it went free to play. But then I guess they saw that there wasn't a market for the game. And so they just wanted to recoup their losses. I, I, I really think that's uh I really think that's what ended up happening with Lawbreakers. For a multiplayer only AAA game. And that may have helped improve the quality of the game. It's hard to say really, but it's possible it would see an improvement in its player base if it moved back to free to play. Of course, people would've... who have paid for the game, well, they certainly wouldn't be too pleased with that. At the very least, free weekends should be a top priority for the game right now to get people involved in it again, get people playing it, and hopefully some people would fall in love. I'm also yeah. not saying that Lawbreakers doesn't have a team element completely. It does, because there is a medic class and you can work together <laughs> to kind of capture the ball in certain oh, games. Oh yeah, modes. medic But class, it's so fast-paced nature that it just doesn't keep my attention. It doesn't really require that much teamwork, in my opinion. Now, of yeah. course, Battlegrounds is easily the biggest game around right now. And while Battle Royale games aren't new, lots of indie devs try to make them. None have got anywhere near the level of success that Battlegrounds has in terms of overall quality and addictiveness i mean 500,000 people playing it right now 8 million copies sold whilst i'm yeah. making this video that's just crazy and it's beaten only by dota 2 on the top 100 and in fact ahead of C wow that's how you know this video is old that's how you know this video is old when pubg beat dota 2 that was mind-blowing and then when fortnite came out and beat pubg that was even crazier that really shows how gaming has shifted. It really does. Let's go now sometimes. And I think that's a great indication of what a lot of gamers want nowadays. Yeah. And that's team-based games where they can be sociable. And the goal is simple. But how you get to that goal is completely up to you. And everything in between yeah. is the player's choice. And you know what? Maybe in five years' time, we'll be looking back and saying, hey, Battle Royale games have had their day. And there'll be a new type of game that we're all in love with. All I know is that my days of playing arena shooters for hours and hours upon end are long gone. So and that's, that's all fair. for today, guys. Do let me know your opinion down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one. And that's fair. That really is a fair opinion to hold. Because gaming in 2019 isn't the same as gaming in 1999, right? In 2020. Like, you know, it doesn't... It's different. And that's fair. But anyways, that's the YouTube content for today. Go check out Jack Frags. Go check out this video. Like it. Subscribe to him. Put the notification bell on. Do all. Whatever. Seriously. Amazing video. Really well thought out. And I think, I think he deserves the likes and subs. But that's the YouTube content for the day, guys. See you next time. Twitch.tv slash TV. Twitch.tv slash TV. Twitch.tv slash TV.